Good evening and welcome once again to the Literary Hour. Um, today we will be discussing literary culture and literacy. And as always, my co-host and professor is here as well. Welcome. Yeah, Jackie, it's nice to be here. How are you today? Oh, it's okay. Okay, yes. And we thank you for joining us today. As I said, we're going to talk about the literary culture of Liberia. We're going to talk about how the literary culture translates or should translate, right, Prof? Should translate to literacy. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So we'll just get right into it. Prof, what is a literary culture? Okay. Uh, well, we, like you said, we said we, we want to talk about creating a literary culture. Uh, at the heart of creating literary culture is the restlessness, the restlessness to uh, take interest in the sharing of information. It has to be something restless about it. Uh, and if there's something restless about it, it means that we all, those who can read and write, which is where literacy comes in. Those who can read and write and are competent enough need to see it as a responsibility, a national, in fact, a survival responsibility to be able to emphasize the sharing of information and to provide the opportunities to provide the outlets for people to take vested interest in this particular thing, this particular thing called literacy, this particular thing called literary culture. Culture we know is a way of life. And so if we talk about literary culture, we are talking about our life uh, regimen when it comes to reading and writing, when it comes to taking interest in the outlets that help us share the information. So it is very, what we are, we are embarking upon uh, in this session today is, is very import, important. It's like a sine qua non. It is a willy nilly type of thing. It is an inevitable type of uh, a way of life that we should uh, invest into. And I tend to emphasize that because you know, uh, if you have your bottle of beer, if you have your bottle of wine, and you are sitting down and you are sipping and all that, and you say life is sweet, and you cannot allow certain opportunities to go around, certain things about information sharing should go around, and you are kind of reneging on that, you are complacent about that, then it is not helpful. So as we go through to uh, t uh, through this hour, we should be able to always come back to the theme of literary, the creating of literary culture and the creating of literacy. It is a responsibility for all of us who believe we are competent to do that. So, so sorry, sorry. Go ahead. So in effect, you're saying that if 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 we who are literary competent as yes yeah. let me use that phrase mm -hmm. if we are literary competent we should not only be the ones to help create a literary culture and help others but you're saying that this literary competency inevitably right yes. because let's say, let's say it was ignited by curiosity it was yes. ignited by by this love of wanting to know yes so, so this this um this love of of reading this literary mm. competency will mm. translate to literacy or yes. it should it should translate in fact in fact if you you are right in, in one sense but they are they are a kind of integrated type of uh one leads to the other okay for instance i'm sure literacy will be the foundational aspect literacy yeah. their capacity, the ability to be able to read and write will be the foundation. Because when you have 
acquired literacy, which is you know the capacity to read and write. Once you have acquired that literacy, then it's like a ravenous appetite. You have that you you should be able people should be able to help you create the ravenous appetite to want to seek information. And it is in that uh, greed for seeking information that lit, lit, uh, literary type of culture will come into the picture. So one leads to the other, and yet at some point they are what? They, they are an integrated whole. But Prof, um, sorry, what I'm thinking is, okay, let's say yes. you have a group that's literary competent, right? Yes. And then you have this other group that is electric, uh -huh. right? Yes. And, 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 and this group that knows should teach or should ignite the fire in yes. this group that does not know. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. When I say does not know, I mean I mean does not know written because of yes. course they know yes. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But what happens if the the literary component, mm -hmm. the literary group, mm -hmm. don't you think that in order for them to ignite that fire, that other group, that the one that is not literally, literally, let, yeah, literary, literarily incompetent uh -huh. that the government there's there's a missing link there you know okay so i guess my thing is what what, what role does the government play in bridging these two gaps these two people together you know uh one of the things that uh the cuban revolution one of the the things that the Cuban Revolution ignited yes. was that of increasing literacy. Yes, yes. So in our world today, Cuba <laughs> is one of those countries in which the literacy rate, the capacity to read and write, yes. is very, very high. Then I want to also bring in uh, Paolo Freire, who uh, wrote the pedagogy. OK. Now, these people, these people, one element called the, the pedagogy of the oppressed, these people saw that there has to be something that ignites learning, ignites the desire for learning. So when you talk about the role of government, yes, government has so many things that we can look for so that a nation can go forward. But Jackie, I believe that sometimes we expect government uh, to do so many things when we too have the capacity to add. I know somebody will say, well, Nagwe, how could you say that maybe government has a good portion of the resources of a nation. And therefore, it is expected to do so much. But here we have to be in the background, trying as much as possible to feed government ideas. And that is part of what we, that is part of what I see this session should be about. So I know, yes, you asked the question, what is the role of government? The motivating factor is there. Government should be able to motivate. Government should be able to uh, provide uh, the mechanisms for protection in terms of what people have to do here and there. But I believe that we too, we who see ourselves as the, uh, who see ourselves at the apex of this reading and writing culture we should be able to do our part. So as we ask for the role of government, we should ask
for the role of ourselves. What can we do to advance first the culture of literacy and then to the literary culture? Okay. So, so we have we have a few slides yes. that, that might uh, uh, throw some light on on it before moving forward. So, if Anthony could put the first slide up, um, so we we could see. So, I I try to to look at the different um, definitions of what literary literacy is. You know, so so it, uh, uh, um, Webster defines it as being able to read and write and having knowledge or competence, right? But mm -hmm. then we have the second, I think the second uh, definition, which was you have cultural, well, this cult is cultural literacy. When you know what an average member of that culture would be expected to know, which is usually assumed and often unstated. So a literate reader knows the object language, languages, alphabet, grammar, and a sufficient set of vocabulary. A culturally literate person knows of giving cultural signs and symbols, including its language, particularly dialectic stories, entertainment, idioms, idiosyncrasies, and so on. The culturally literate person is able to talk to and understand others of that culture with fluency. Now, the reason why I brought cultural literacy is that, yes, you have literary literacy, right? But sometimes literary literacy comes with cultural literacy, don't you think, or no? Am I jumping the gun? Well, yeah, because actually the um, cultural literacy actually is expansive. Yeah, okay. Uh, being verse, being verse in, for instance, you find that in, in the health industry, uh, those who are those who are health care givers are often advised to work on cultural literacy. In other words, yes, the yes, patients yes. that you are going to serve, you've got to you you don't have to be a professor in the people's culture, but at least you need to. Uh, understand the people's culture sufficiently to know the sources of their fears, to know the sources of their joys, like we are talking about uh, vaccination today. And black and brown people are talking about, well, many of them are hesitant. <laughs> yes. yeah, many of them are hesitant. You cannot blame them for that. Yeah you should go into the history of uh, scientificness of this society, of Western society, for instance, that led to the uh, unequal testing of these people as a result of which, especially uh, there was this, uh, this uh, thing about syphilis. Yeah, Tuskegee. Well, yeah, very, very good. In fact, which led to the need for us to have institutional uh, research bureau in every every school or something of that sort, so that whenever you have you have to uh, do research, you've got to get the the uh, what the uh, informed consent of people here and there. So let's come back talking about uh, the um, cultural literacy is just broad, and of course we can uh, kind of. Uh, find a space for, for uh, literary culture in it or the culture of literacy in it. So if we know how to kind of uh, dichotomize these things, then of course we can make progress. Cultural literacy, it has to do with understanding the people's, uh, basic, basically understanding the people's norms and mores to be able to interface with them. That is true of education, that is true of uh, the health industry. Okay, Prof. so I think I think I was I was I was mixing the two, trying to to understand it. I think I was mixing the two because yeah. because I thought cultural literacy mm -hmm. was almost the same as as literary literacy, which is not. Uh -huh. So if we look if we look at the next slide, again it was talking about I think cultural lit literacy. The next slide. So so this one is about Liberian literacy rate, but okay. this is also cultural literacy where you have the so actually language 
and 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 uh, 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 behaviors, food, clothing, those as the surface okay. of cultural literacy. Mm -hmm. And then underneath, we have the values and the status and the things like that. So that's cultural literacy. So literary literary literacy could be a part of cultural literacy. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That's okay. that's why I said that you know uh, cultural literacy is expansive, and in that, that's where we find that. So you you are you are still in in the loop. Okay. So the next slide is just about the education, educational level is 47% literacy rate in Liberia. And actually, if you look at it, I was looking, I was reading it and they said that uh, Cape Mount has the lowest literacy rate. And of course, Montserrado has the highest. Mm -hmm. And then the next slide, if we, if we go on to the next slide. Um, let's, let's pause a little when we come yes. to the. Please stop, stop the slide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You you, yeah. you 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 know that for for of course you know that for a long time uh uh Moravia has been considered Liberia isn't that yes. right yes. so yeah, one can understand why that one can understand why the the literacy rate in in the nation's capital will be uh that very high yeah so, so prof um if you look at the fact that we are trying to build a literate, a literate and a literary culture in Liberia. Yeah. And if you look at it, you can see that there are aspects that are missing in Liberia now that we had. You know, for example, you know, my father had the National Bookstore. Yes, yes, yes. So I spent yes. all my time mm -hmm. in that bookstore reading, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I used to hide because I used to go and help him in a store uh -huh. And instead of helping the customers, I will be hiding. Uh, reading. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so, so, so the the um the curiosity mm -hmm. was sparked, mm -hmm. and it never stopped. You know. Yes. So, so now you have um people in Liberia like uh, they keep literacy program. There are other uh, uh, literacy. I mean, there are other programs that are trying to spark this in young kids. Yes. Again, we come back. The literary culture that we are trying to build. Mm -hmm. How can it be fostered, nurtured, encouraged in an environment that is scarce resources, mm -hmm. that is sparse? And remember, when we were growing up, we did not have all the other diversions, mm -hmm. entertainment centers, yeah. you know, cell phones. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to build this literary culture in Liberia? Uh First, we have to ask ourselves, who can do that? Who can do that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be done by volunteering groups. It has to be done by institutions it has to be done by government you see in that order the volunteering groups have got to be people like us instead of uh forming groups to always there are people who say oh i get my team okay yes that is the physical part. There's nothing wrong with that. That is the physical part. There's nothing wrong with that. But can we also organize little reading groups in the communities? We have teams to play football, you know, that's the physical part. But can we organize? Uh, and the other thing, by the time you say, Jack, and I'm not against uh, organizing little groups for religious purposes. By the time you say, Jack, somebody is starting to build a little church <laughs> and starts yeah, putting one or two children together and starting my little uh, uh, evangelical group. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But there are other things to sustain people, the practicalities of life. So we can talk about little learning groups, little reading groups, little writing groups, little writing groups 
to 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 whom we can sometimes uh, give little dictations to see how people are understanding what they are hearing and what have you to see how people can uh, write words and all that kind of a thing. So again, I'm talking about the voluntary group. Then we go on to institutions where we have schools, hmm? high schools, elementary schools, and what have you. Can we get these children, these students, into uh, little study groups? It's not just studying uh, what is going on in school and what have you, but the whole nine yards of the activities that kind of spark people to want to read, that kind of spark people to want to write. So we have that. When we get to the the level of schools, of course, uh, growing up, there were uh, various teams or various groups in schools. You know, people can work on those. And then you get to, you get from the grade school to the um, college level. And as you are doing all that and uh, setting up little programs and what have you, then of course, we can get to private organizations. We talk about banking institutions, we talk about corporations. And then of course, we can, we can get, there's something about leadership. We say we say this and say that about leadership, but there is something about leadership. When a, 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 a guy at the top, when a guy at the top uh, continues to talk about some of these things, when they hear, when people hear these things from the leaders of the community, the leaders of the country, there's bound to be. A, a kind of uh, metastasizing excitement, a widespread excitement in things. But if our leaders, those in the, the legislature, those in the judiciary, those in the executive, if they are every now and then talking about these things and people see them participating in them, there's one thing to talk I just want to bring a side comment. Uh, when the press, when the press, uh, what is guy's name, man? I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. Oh, this is serious. I'm forgetting this guy's name. Who just left office in America? Who just left office? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine someone like Trump? I'm forgetting. Trump, Trump, when they get on his back, especially in these last days, when they get on his back to talk about to talk about to show the need for to show to tell the need for is different from to show the need for when he goes on yeah you do vaccination you do vaccination yeah you can go about that but he is not into it and therefore his people are not with him so in the case of literature in the case of reading and writing in the case of a, a kind of uh inspiring people to do these things our leaders must not say these things are important they must show it by whatever they give they must show it by wherever these things are happening and then they can come on board to kind of inspire people so let's go uh volunteering group grade school college and then of course institutions, private and public institutions, and then at the top of that is the national leadership. Yeah, so, so no the, answer. The, the thing is that when, 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 when you're reading, you must be excited about a book before you can continue, you know, because like sometimes I pick up a book, I don't want to read it. But, but what I think a, liter, a literary culture is, a literate literary mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. is, when you when you have a group of people let's say if you now you were walking in new york right and somebody mm -hmm. says to their friend uh, uh tout brute mm -hmm. you know exactly what that means mm -hmm. because you're part of that group that knows that that's julius caesar yeah you are literary competent mm -hmm. you know if somebody says 
you never know how tall you are until you are, you are asked to rise. Emily Dickinson. So, so you know, even at the, the place that I work, we find books for the freshmen. All the freshmen read that same book mm -hmm. so that when, when they are talking, they know exactly the characters, they know the theme, they know what they're yeah. talking about, you know? So the thing is that I feel like literary, literary competent people are people who have these classics that they've read that serves as the foundation of their yeah. knowledge. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like somebody reads Tom Sawyer, somebody reads To Kill a Mockingbird, yeah. you know? So when you say those things, I say, Prof, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Because yeah. When, you, when you refer to something, I'm like, oh, I know which book is coming from, yeah. right? So we have this literary, literate, literary culture, right? So now we have Liberia. You do not have people who have a singular, you know, like everybody read the same book, mm -hmm. you know? I remember growing up, there used to be a, a television series called, I'm dating myself, it was called V. Mm -hmm. And then there was the show Dallas, remember? Yeah. So uh -huh. everybody, they watch this soap opera and when they're walking, when they go to work, ah, they say it. So they were literate in this in this Dallas soap opera because they knew, right? Yeah. It was a cohesive, cohesive thing that brought them together. Yeah. So I, 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 I would say, Prof, in Liberia, there was a dearth of knowledge, you know? Because Hirsch says, Reading and writing it doesn't make you competent, literary, mm -hmm. literate or competent, right? Mm -hmm. You may know how to read and write. It is the usage of the words. Mm -hmm. It is the comprehension behind yeah. the word. Mm -hmm. It is this load of knowledge that comes with mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that makes you literate or liter literate and competent mm -hmm. in literacy, yeah. right? Okay, so, so um, I think what I would say is that Let's look at the curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the Liberian reading, the high school reading curriculum, yeah. and let's see how best, let, let's just critique it for like two minutes and then go on. Now, mm -hmm. what I want is, I, I, when I choose a book, right, for my kids mm -hmm. when they were growing up, mm -hmm. I would say, yes, it's reading for pleasure. Yeah. But I will also say, what is it going to teach them? Mm -hmm. What is it going to teach them that I want them to know, yeah. right? So yeah. for me, even to be, even if lit, uh, even if literacy transmits into norms and values and ways to behave, right? Yeah. It is the school. It is because because you you know you could say book clubs, but book clubs are voluntary. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we have a book club now at my my office. I mean, I haven't been to the office since March 17th, mm -hmm. but we've read four different books and we get on the Zoom and we discuss these books. You know, we yeah. vote for the book. So we keep this alive. So what I'm saying is that with this, some people drop out, you know, some people come in because it's voluntary, yeah. right? So if you say to the group in Liberia, you know, you guys are the ones who love reading. You love this literary culture you know get together they may or may not like i say it's yeah. voluntary so two the two the two people the two groups that can make it mandatory will be the school and the government mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and oh and you know what i was going to say and and churches because let me tell you prof <laughs> i don't mean to make fun but nobody can quote the bible like these people who open these small churches mm -hmm. you know they know how to quote the Bible and think mm -hmm. so the Bible or the, 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 the Christian the Christianity text could also be an igniter of literacy, mm -hmm. right? Because you teach the kids just how they, 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 the Muslim teach the, the, the people how their, their kids how to read the, the Quran. Mm -hmm. you teach your kids how to read the Bible. So the Bible itself is a literary literacy agent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So at what age should a person be implored? reading and writing habit i think as early as possible you have to keep reading to your kids you, they, you know what i yeah 
in in uh, if you get to child psychology, uh, you will understand that by the time the the child is two or three years, the child begins to mouth a number of words, and by the time the child gets to four, you know, and then goes on to five and what have you. So, at a point when the child has sufficient words at the point at which the child has sufficient words and this is this is sometimes unequal in terms of a child maybe one child who is three years old and is just a volley of words it may not be another child so but whatever the baseline is uh, people should begin from that process and uh little flyers here and there that child can pick up on that until they 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 think about reading and writing becomes a habit a habit yes <clears throat> instead of a hobby it has to become a habit and in that process that child is fired up every now and then to want to read things here and there but i agree with you that uh i said something about school and on that level too um the religious groups should come into the picture both uh both uh, christians and and uh muslims and of course any other uh any other religious group in the place there yes except that the religious the religious groups tend to be fanatical yes in yes. terms yes. of focusing only and only on things that are religion related yes yes and it has to and that is again uh diversion a little uh that is that is the thing that is wrong with us in terms of literacy you know uh those who have been in the vanguard for developing uh literacy in in uh, african languages uh they have come from uh, religious groups and therefore whatever literature they try to create uh, has focused only on on uh, all things religious except i mean instead of going into other areas of life we have to uh, think about literacy within the context of all activities of life just as when we are talking about reading we should think about all things of life so if these religious groups are willing to uh, you know bring in other sanitized type of ideas into their literature and all that that would be a beautiful thing so 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 if if we can look at the uh, curriculum uh that, that so i mean because what i want to show is the from grade one mm -hmm. to grade 12 right yes let us examine the books okay the reading books that they use um okay. if Anthony could put the slide so okay. we could see uh uh first 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 we need to keep in mind that curriculum is life yes curriculum is life in other words it is the life it is the activities the norms and mores again of a people that ought to factor that ought to factor into a curriculum yes yes prof and that's what i want to show yes if you look at the first grade one to six right okay so they are doing the old man and his hat right uh -huh. that's the phonics for liberian schools book then they have gateway to english for primary school right yes but from seven to nine look at the books a midsummer night's dream right that's shakespeare yes right so so and then they have uh english textbook by gabriel williams helena copa ophelia lewis right well, and then they have gateway to english they have i i, I know why the cage birds sing so i'm thinking it's a poem right maya no, angelo it's, it, the, the, it's uh is i think the the first she did a series she did a series of her her life journey yes i know why the cage bird uh, bird sing that's the first in the cycle of our uh, life stories okay uh-huh 
Okay, and then and then if you look at 10 to 12th grade, they have a Midsummer's Night Dream again. Uh -huh. Let me die alone. A government driver on his retirement. And then listen to the storyteller, right? Uh -huh. So now I'm thinking. So this is um so this is the, the, the books that the students read, right? Mm -hmm. For the English portion of the of the um the English portion of the, the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now, my thing is if you want to teach, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these books, but like we say, the curriculum must be context driven. Yes. Right? It must reflect the people mm, yes. of the country. It must mm -hmm. reflect not only the people but the norms the mm -hmm. value mm -hmm. of a given society and in yeah. this case the liberian society right yes yes so so so, so if you if you're teaching a midsummer's night's dream now i don't know so let me put this there i don't know if they change it this is from the curriculum that's on the the site but mm -hmm. i don't think what a midsummer's night dream i'm thinking mm -hmm. about that book i'm like i mean that play i'm like huh you know why not julius caesar mm -hmm. You know, which teaches you what about civics? Mm -hmm. It teaches you patriotism, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you if you if you're putting a conscious decision into choosing a book, that is the uh, um, the book. So these are the titles that I said. You know, things fall apart, right? If you look at the classics, things fall apart is one of the greatest classics of all time. Mm -hmm. It says that one of the one of among the one hundred best books. Mm -hmm. So you have things fall apart. What happened to Julius Caesar? You can teach Animal Farm. You can teach Moby Dick, mm -hmm. Di Diary of Anne Frank, Long Walk to Freedom, Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. and then you come to the Liberian the Rain and the Night, the beautiful ones are not yet born. Ayeku Ama, that's a classic. What about our own murder in the Kisawa Patch? Mm -hmm. What about Guyana Pau? Mm -hmm. Nuggets of the African novel. Why not choose books that are culturally relevant to our time, our place, and our space? I guess that's what I'm saying. Okay, they they are from the width of uh, uh, information coming from home. It appears to me that there is a strong voice for foreign writers than domestic writers. Um, I know somebody will say, how ah, you can say that? Uh, and probably I don't blame them because there isn't anyone, or at least there isn't any strong voice uh, talking about uh, local writers and they are saying, oh, our people don't write. But there are so many people in the diaspora. It is in recent times, re as recent as I think uh, uh, last year or so, that uh, people started reaching out to the to uh, to people uh, to others in the diaspora. I know that it was last year that they tentatively approved of the of my nuggets of the african novel uh oh. arrangements have not been uh, fully fully uh, consummated uh is that, is, is that for high school uh, uh, well this yeah i think for secondary school but this is an all-purpose uh, type of uh, book uh, the nuggets of the african novel uh since it for instance uh, summarizes uh a lot of the critical novels that are read in liberian schools and uh and there are a lot of activities that that uh can be drawn from that book as i was saying there is a group that intends to fund uh liberian based uh writers and again that is still kind of floundering along the way i don't know the progress on that now but your the question you are raising is a legitimate question the question about uh getting those people getting those writers getting those researchers that have 
call them Liberianists from the level of uh, the Liberian uh, Studies Association. Those who are interested in Liberia, those who are Liberians, as well as those who are interested in Liberia, Liberia uh, they should be able to uh, a kind of drive, drive the conversation drive the conversation and uh and also you know our schools just like maybe schools in the united states of america these are high stakes test driven group so in our case you're talking about yek i think they have another name for it why yek or something of that sort uh so students are preparing for the exams and a lot of those people uh, that spark the setting up of the exams are from Nigeria, are from Ghana, and therefore uh, uh, books that are used by those people are often recommended. And unfortunately, there isn't any strong voice to say, well, we have people too who can be co-opted, who can be incorporated. You cannot be, you cannot be a different person and you speak for Liberia. Huh? You cannot be a different person and speak for Liberia. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, some of those things, unfortunately, it is other people talking for Liberia. And maybe it is because they provide the financial resources. Again, this is where government's role will come into the picture you know, this is where government's voice should be in there not only the voice but government's own action should be in the process of determining first how our curriculum is created and two what goes into our curriculum there is i i said something about the life and all those things that the three part uh conversions in terms of creating curriculum, you have the learner, you have the teacher, and you have the society. It is what comes out of the society that is poured into the curriculum, and then the teacher becomes the midwife who delivers it to the student, and then or the learner. I should say learner because uh, you. Then the learner comes to the picture. So. These three from society, you have government, and government with all its uh, functionaries should be able to help determine uh, the type of materials that are used to create the, the curriculum. Because eventually, what goes into the curriculum establishes the continuity of society. Yes. yes. You see, we every, every generation builds up for the other generation. And that should be, you know, the thing to go. But anyway, maybe that's for another day. <laughs> maybe we can we can take some questions. I mean, some comments, and just yeah. see if people mm -hmm. are following us, if they're listening. Yeah. If they think it, they're interesting. Um, I will. I don't. Okay. Oh, so G Play is watching. Thank you, G Play. Um, Kim, or when I was uh, Kim, the book written by you when I was not born, the road to Rome <laughs> <laughs> remains my best Liberian literature book up to date. <laughs> I really appreciate seeing you today by my phone, watching from Buchanan City. Oh, oh uh, thank Buchanan you, Elvis. City. Is that, Hi, is that, Elvis. Isn't that great? Oh, yes. my God. Hi, Elvis. You wrote Romeo. Yeah, you wrote a Romeo, yes. That's a uh, part of uh, wartime literature. Yes. I even did a second part, which is Whispers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Reading groups are needed. Yes, they are needed. Yeah, yeah reading groups are needed. Mm hmm there is a need for culturally responsive teachings in our schools. Teachers mm -hmm. must be trained to understand the culture of the students they teach. Mm -hmm. We need to use objects in our environment to create mm -hmm. manipulatives for teaching. There is a I need to revisit our curriculum and pedagogy. Anastasia, yes. I, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's a powerful statement there. This uh, culturally relevant uh, materials uh, that we aren't Paying a lot more attention to it's a, it's a it's a it's a serious thing, and that brings in this whole idea. This brings in this whole idea of uh, understanding our identity. You see, 
Yes. Understanding our identity. Who are we? Who are we? We are a communal people, people of community, people who take interest in one another. We are people who are supposed to respect and embrace nature, the, rise, the environment, for instance. We need, we are people who take interest in the environment. I guess for me, the, the thing is also, if you want to make it interesting for the students to want to read, if you want to build that curiosity, mm -hmm. you must make the book enjoyable mm -hmm. and you must, you must choose books that, that carry messages. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm thinking, okay, um, make some of a nice dream. I mean, it's not a book I would choose for the school, mm -hmm. but what kind of message mm -hmm. is it? I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's a, a comedy of errors, but I still can't be, can't understand why Midsummer Night's Dream, because if mm -hmm. you look at the curriculum, mm -hmm. not only are they teaching it in um, seventh to ninth grade, they're teaching it in 12, uh, in ninth to 12 grades also. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why, you know, why would you teach that and not teach an, uh, another, another, if it was Shakespeare, why not uh, 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 choose another play? Or maybe, uh, I do not know if it's um, man mandated by Wayek, because maybe if that's yeah. the case, then of yeah, course, it's, that's just, what, yeah. it's just so mm -hmm. strange to me. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Prof, so so now let's say I am the the president of Liberia. Mm -hmm. I could be. Yeah. And I'm asking you to help me to create a literary culture in, in Liberia. Mm -hmm. So, be, so so you're going to tell me okay book clubs and things like that what can i do as president or as as minister of, of education or somebody in power what can mm -hmm. i do to, to, to carry this culture forward okay uh, the first is to create the important understanding of the meaning and use of information. Okay. Now that is at the motivational level. Always try to, uh, I have a friend who once said to her ch children, every, any paper you see lying on the floor, don't just grab it and put it in the trash can. You never know which piece of information you will be losing or we will be losing if you throw that paper away. So from the get-go, people should understand the importance of information sharing. Information is valuable to life itself. Information is valuable to health. Information is valuable to success. That should be beaten into the heads of people. If people take interest in information, try to do little gift giving as a way of motivation. Motivation is the starting point. The next thing is to, and of course that's part of the motivation. The next thing is to encourage banking institutions, uh, uh, business corporations like uh, uh, the beer factories and all those other factories, even if it is a tenth of things, to be able to create a fund, let a fund be created to support those who can become outlets for materials for people to use for both reading and writing. So I said motivation, that motivation has to be a recurrent type of thing. And then it can get, it can be just philosophical, it can be moral, which is, a, I'm giving moral support. We have to have something more than moral support. That's where the instituting of a fund a national fund that will have a team to supervise 
and tap into and encourage people who are interested in research, people who are interested in writing. Also, there has to be a component, a, a kind of reading component, which will encourage young people from the early ages, we'll talk about elementary, go on to junior high, go on to high school, so that they have uh, competency in oral reading, for instance. Can we have little writing competitions? Can we have little reading competitions which will bring in oral reading? Because if people cannot read, which is preceded by understanding what is on the paper or what is heard, then definitely they will not be inspired to write. Yeah, yes. So I yes. guess uh, those few things can start again, the uh, general motivational type of speaking and what have you, and then you come to providing actual funding, creating a fund base, and having people, uh, I mean, honest people, hopefully, to uh, a kind of uh, manage this fund. Obviously, every now and then they will have pro to provide reports and all that kind of a thing, and to cherish, to celebrate those people who are competent readers, who are competent writers, and what have you. This whole idea of exchanging should be able to do that. And on the other level, people should be able to, uh, what is it, create uh, conversation groups, always kind of uh, discussing books, discussing studies, and what have you, to kind of keep uh, the whole momentum going. If these things are not there, the funding, the groups to kind of encourage and uh, kind of inspire these people, other people, then it, it becomes a problem. Yeah, I think I think also. I mean, I think you're right, and I think the government should put a huge uh, um, emphasis on 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 uh, uh, um, creating this literary culture that will translate to literacy. Because I know that thirty minutes from where I live is. Um, mark twain's uh place mm -hmm. you know it, it's where it's where mark twain uh did his writings um uh and and um people people come from all over to to visit his library there's a very prestigious uh, uh writing scholarship mm -hmm. where uh, i mean people compete from all over the world and they yeah. come there and they write you know so they, they, they the government you know encourages writing yeah. and, you know, encourages people to to come and compete for this prestigious scholarship, and I think for me, looking at the curriculum, looking at the even even if it's I even if it's a poem that says I know why the caged bird sings. I mean, we all love Maya Angelou, mm -hmm. but do not forget we have poets like Bighty Moore, mm -hmm. we have poets like Edwin Edwin Barclay. Yeah, you know, I mean, we have we have we have poets like yeah, uh, many. Uh, you, you, yeah, you know, so we have people that because if you're going to make it culturally responsive as anastasia said you must use our people mm -hmm. our our stories you mm -hmm. know um what, i mean and make it you you know i mean when i'm when i'm reading like i would i would to, to make the kids curious i would read the first three pages get them hooked mm -hmm. and then i'll stop and they will say and then what happened and then what happened and i said okay tomorrow mm -hmm. and they cannot wait for tomorrow yeah. because they, they want to but it's because some of the stories that I'm, I'm, I'm reading is books I brought from 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 South Africa, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, folk, uh, Nelson Mandela's favorite folk tales, mm -hmm. books like that. So I think that I think that the government can do more. You know, they can they can they can encourage writers. Mm -hmm. You know, they can have writing competitions. Mm -hmm. They can have these things. And most importantly, there must be a place. There must be a national library prop. Mm -hmm. We have no national library in Liberia. Mm -hmm. And when I said, I mean, a huge national free library that people mm -hmm. can go get the library card. We need something like that mm -hmm. in Liberia. You know, if we are going to encourage people to be literate and to be literary literate, there must be somewhere they can go for the literature mm -hmm. to be literate. Yeah. What do you think? No, I, everything you said about that, Jackie, uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, so so 
the 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 cycle then we need to create all uh what needs to come together you know is right there in uh the statement you 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 made we need to have a reservoir a pool p o o l a pool uh where people who are thirsty for reading can go and have a drink yes uh we need community libraries we need community libraries then of course it, i i see part of the part of the uh development scheme that people I see you go over there and you see a building for uh, justice. Mm? Every every county headquarter uh, quarter has a a a building for the judiciary. Every county headquarter has a building for customs but pray tell me why in every uh, county headquarters we don't have a community library we don't have a county library why don't we even if we have a high school for that is all the reason why we need a library that is again part of the creating of literary culture where you can have a massive structure where there will be a place for educational filming all these books we're talking about some of them have movies to them there will be a session for uh the uh what you call the hard copies of books and what have you there should be a session for filming there should be a session for uh uh speakers maybe invite some of the liberian writers that might be in the country or outside of the country to go and give pep talk with respect to how to improve your writing, how to improve your writing culture and all those things. So they are, all these things must work into them. They should work together. One part leaving out the other will kind of uh, create a, a gap and who knows what ugly thing might enter into that gap. Yeah, so, so the, the, um, the, 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 literary, the literary and literacy infrastructure yes that is missing must be built to be able to ignite mm -hmm. this environment that we want you yes. know because when we say the well, when we say oh we need to we need to um our children don't know what used to happen in the past mm -hmm. but who's going to teach them you who's know? going to teach them you have to put, you have to write stories you mm -hmm. i mean i mean i was listening to npr and npr they have people going into different different communities around the world to what to do to record uh, uh, languages that are dying out. Yes. To to record stories of yes. people, you mm -hmm. know, to record. So you, you, I mean, I mean, when you go to the apartheid museum and you're going through, you're listening to people's stories. Mm -hmm. They're telling you, you know, I was walking. I did not have my passbook. And they put me in jail. My name is Dombeka. You mm -hmm. are listening to these stories, yeah. you know, and, and, and it is essential for us as a people to have this place, you know, and, and, and it is not going to come mm -hmm. from a GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. It is not going to come from all oh, that. It's going to come from a concerted effort mm -hmm. of civil society, Liberia's within and without, and the government. The political will and the government must, you know, they must strengthen this literary culture. If it is there and it's, it is budding, they must make it blossom, you know, and they, and, and the culturally relevant books, 
must be put in the curriculum or else the, this literary literacy culture will not translate mm -hmm. into literacy as we as we want it to be yeah. as we want it to do yeah i, I agree with you uh but uh jackie we need to keep in again i i come back to the uh the point one of the points we made earlier that you know when a giant when a giant that has the capacity to move has some level of reticence has some level of reluctance for whatever reason even tiny bees can sing the behind of that giant <laughs> and it will be stirred into action. I believe that if a giant sometimes does not have the orientation to such a thing, it has to be pushed. I am reminded of seven at one blow. <laughs> it's a, a little uh, story way back. <laughs> This teeny tiny man used his head. And so he went from village to village uh, propagating his name, seven, at one blow. I strike once and seven people fall. Uh, one part of this episode that I want to bring to our conversation here is when he got into the town of two giants. And he said he was going to defeat them. And they said, you little teeny weeny, how can you do that? And he said, just watch and see. The villagers showed uh, him the tree under which they often retired, having uh, wreaked havoc in the village. So what did he do? He got some pebbles and put them in his bag and went up the tree. And one after another, he threw a stone on each of the giants. And all of a sudden, he would throw one here and the other one will tap the other one and say, you, you hit me. He said, no, I didn't hit you. <laughs> then he would do it to, to the other one. Eventually, he ignited a fight. And those two fought until they killed themselves. Well, he came down from the tree and he said, I killed them. He didn't say he used stone. He didn't say I, 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 I threw them with a hill of stones. No. I am saying my dear friend, my dear sister, I am saying that when a government does not want to move for whatever reason, those who have the passion, those who have the zest, even if they are two or three, they must work together. And I have always said that it depends on how intense the passion is. Nothing meaningful can so easily get done. This cultural thing, this literary culture we are talking about, it is the engine of national development. Yes. Let us not play with it. It is the engine of national development. And if we want our government, if we want our country to go far, we must mobilize like our lives depended on that like our lives depended on that so yes i know government can do this government can do that but i think it is also equally our responsibility to keep beating the drum thank you so much prof um uh it seems as if every time we we get together to discuss time goes by so fast and then yes. we're like is it almost, is an hour already? 
Yeah. But we would like to tell you thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to, to be talking more about uh, building this literary culture. So on the next um, uh, uh, um, broadcast, we'll also talk about what we didn't talk about today, about your favorite books mm -hmm. and, and how they move you yeah. and, uh, and what ignited this mm -hmm. love of reading. If you yeah. do have a love of reading, we yeah. will talk about favorite books. So Prof, think about your favorite books and keep it so next week we can discuss it. I have a list, but I, I think I will stop to three. Uh -huh. So so please join us next week. And also don't forget we're doing um, uh, a call for submissions of mm. what, what, what Liberia means to me. Yes. So a page, three <coughs> paragraphs, I think, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, to focus on Liberia at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. it, it will be uh, published a book of essays, but yeah. patriotic essays or yeah. reflective essays. Yeah, reflective essays. Funny, you know. Yeah, funny essays. Mm -hmm. What does Liberia mean to me you? To you, yeah. you know, what is it when you say I'm a Liberian? What does it yeah. mean? Mm -hmm. You know, we thank you for joining us. Uh, have a safe weekend. Will the CDC say we can travel within the United States if we have our vaccine? Yeah. So as soon as I get my second vaccine, I'm going to travel. Prof, I might be seeing you soon. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes. So so don't forget, we are all Liberians, as, yeah. the, as the song says, and that's what yeah. we're in with. And we hope that to is, see you next week. Okay, is, thank you so much. Mask yeah. up. Enjoy the weekend. Yes. Prof, thank you Please. so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We all love you, man.